Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Secrets for an Inspirational Life. How are we all today? I hope that wherever you are in the world, that there is still that flame of hope burning brightly. Whatever life throws at us, we have to, we really truly have to keep the hope alive. And it's not enough just to keep it alive in the sense of thinking it. We actually have to become the hope, the hope for ourselves, the hope for our families and friends and those that we love. Because it is when we become the hope that everything changes in our life. Now, today I have an absolutely wonderful guest, I have to say. She is such a magical, mystical lady. And it's one of those things that is very close to my heart that she's going to talk about today. And that is animals. Now, animals I have a real deep connection with. And I'm one of those people that if you like my cat, then I like you. I know it's very funny, but it's one of those sort of ninja moments where anyone who says anything about cats, um, I get very, very protective. And I have a friend of mine who's exactly the same. And as soon as we meet someone, do you like cats? No. Oh, okay. It's one of those things. But in any case, that's also with animals. Every animal is an absolute sentient being and has so much to teach us, really. And it's one of those things that very, very holy people and very spiritual people have used and still use animals as a way of crossing the dimensions, but also in the raising of our vibration and also in encompassing a more compassionate heart for ourselves and that of others. And I think that when you look at a nation, I don't know if it was Gandhi that said this, um, I'm sure you know out there, that it is how you look at the nation and how they treat their animals and how they treat their animals is how they treat human beings. And I really do believe that. And I think that when people are compassionate and loving towards animals, they are naturally, immediately compassionate towards human beings. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome my guest today, who is the lovely Beth Lee Crowther, also known as Psychic Beth. Beth is one of the most diverse psychic mediums working in the UK today. She offers guidance to others as a psychic, a medium, clairvoyant, Reiki master, animal communicator, and wonderfully, a radio presenter. Her focus has always been to make her work accessible and enjoyable for others. Within Beth's work, she often encounters people looking for answers during a stage in which they feel lost or indeed stuck. Beth believes that small moments of motivation are really key to seeing things more clearly. She has her own weekly radio show, which I have to say I have been on. It's rather wonderful, where listeners are able to experience a free psychic reading on the show and also join in with psychic development and listen to some well-known guests from the psychic world. Beth has recently been on ITV this morning, three times over the last six months, as a pet psychic, doing readings for the viewers of the show. And she has recently appeared on ITV on Martin and Roman Kemp's Sunday Best program. Beth has a book which is called Life by Numbers, which is available on Amazon. And she's going to tell us about that later on. Today, she shares her wonderful story. Welcome, dear Beth. Hello, Mimi. Thank you for having me on your wonderful podcast. Oh, thank you, Beth. How are you? I'm really good. I'm excited to be here and it's good to connect with you again. 
Oh, I have to say, I've mentioned it slightly to the listeners out there, but um, I had the absolute pleasure of being invited onto Beth's spiritual show. Um, And it's absolutely wonderful. She's a fantastic host, I have to say. How is that going? Oh, that's kind of you. We loved having you on the show, uh, Mimi. It was a really good show when you were on. I know all my listeners really enjoyed it. The show goes from strength to strength, fortunately, uh, mainly due to the wonderful guests that come on to the show, uh, Mm. very well-known psychics and mediums and holistic therapists. We often do free readings on it as well, so everybody can join in. We have a psychic challenge every week uh so there's a bit of a bit of a prize giveaway with that one so mm-hmm. yeah that's to do with your psychic development so you're learning uh, you can have a reading and you can listen to some of the wonderful guests that we have on pulse talk radio so it's a weekly show and i just love doing it i've been doing it now for over 10 years because i used to do the show on a local radio station in Stourbridge. I did it for five years on the bridge radio, had Mm. a little break, wrote a book uh, during that break. And then I started on Pulse Talk Radio uh, about three years ago. So continued the show there. So it's great. And I'm so grateful to everybody who follows the show and joins in. And yeah, being very well supported, um, had all the big if you like, the big psychic people on there. I, I don't mean that disrespectful to anybody else, but no, that's the, the ones more that ones. you would have, you know, the ones that mm. you would have seen on the TV. So we've been very mm. lucky to have had uh, Derek Akora on the show uh, about three times. Gordon Smith has been on. Uh, the late Colin Fry was a guest. So we've, we've had some wonderful, wonderful mediums. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's great. I love doing it. It's a passion of mine. And, yeah, it, it really is a lovely thing to do. So, yeah, we really enjoyed it when you came on, Mimi. I'm hoping you're going to come back on a future show. Of course, of course. I would love to come back. And I have to say, it's such an interesting show because I was listening to some of the other guests and I like the whole energy and the vibe of the show. It's very flamboyant in a way and very effervescent. And you are such a good um, presenter, really. I think you get the oh, best out of you. the people. Yeah, for sure. For, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm I like to sure just let it go with the flow. I don't see myself really as particularly a, a good presenter or anything like that. I oh. just love what I I just love what I do, and I love talking to people, and I get to know them, and we end up being friends most of the time. And it's really like listening in to somebody's chat. I don't I don't like to pre-plan it too much with the guests because mm. they may wish to go off in a different direction and chat about things that maybe I wouldn't have thought about with them. So I like to give them a bit of a, a free reign and that seems to work well on the show. And of course our listeners text in with all questions that they want to put forward to the guests. So I don't always like to get too much in the way of that. So it just seems to work out nicely I think it's a good way I think to do it naturally and not to have it pre-planned in such a tight regime is something that always works best now when is it um the show when does it run and how can people have a listen in on that well it's based in the UK so it's Mm -hmm. a UK time of 6 till 8 p.m every Wednesday evening. It's called Psychic Beth Spiritual Calling Show and it's on pulsetalkradio.com. So you can listen to that on our website. You can ask Alexa or your smart speaker uh, to play it. And then what we do at the end of the show, we upload it to mixcloud.com so that you can listen again. Maybe you've had a reading and you'd like to hear the reading again. And then Mm. also on our website, we have a replay option so if you've missed it you can catch up or maybe we've interviewed somebody that you would really be interested um, to learn more about so you can go on Mixcloud and look at all the previous shows when I uploaded um, the most recent show Mimi Mm -hmm. I was a little bit shocked because when I looked at Mixed Cloud, it said it was 113 shows (laughs) I got on there. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, 
goodness me, I couldn't believe I'd put that many on there or done that many shows. That's amazing, really. You know, when you look back at all the effort that you've put in, does it make you feel proud? Um, I think it stops me from going insane. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I suppose you could say it makes me feel proud. I don't I never think of it like that. I just feel like it's a normal thing for me to do. And it gives me such a wonderful focus every week because when yeah. you're sort of doing work as a psychic and I obviously I do my pet psychic stuff and, and I'm an author as well, it mm. can feel a little bit solitary. So yes. you're at home a lot of the time, you're using the phone a lot of the time. And I mm. know that more and more people have experienced that throughout the lockdown period, but that was normal for me before lockdown. And so what happens is when I do the radio on a Wednesday, I connect with so many people and it feels like a bit of a family or a bit like a club, you know, mm -hmm. and I get so excited and I get so into it and I look forward to it and I enjoy it. And so I'm proud of that, that we've got this sort of family of people. And of course, we welcome new listeners each time. But I'm very fortunate that I've got people that have stuck with me um, throughout the 10 years from the other radio station and have followed on to Pulse Talk Radio. So I feel very blessed. And I do loads of fun things and my latest thing is to do a lot mm. of manifestation I really believe that that is something that most people if they put their mind to it can do so when you said to everybody about me going on to ITV with this morning and on Martin and Roman's Sunday Best program yeah I manifested that I asked the universe if I could go on TV because I hadn't been on the TV for years I'd been on um, a little bit in around 2005 uh, because I was sort of well known for doing the pet psychic work then and I went on to the Richard and Judy show I did a pet psychic thing for the Trisha Goddard show um, and then I did a couple of documentary things and then it went really quiet and then I did a little bit more in about 2012 on um, a local TV station made in Birmingham I think it's called I think it was called Big Centre TV and that they've, they've changed it I think and I went on Cooper TV a couple of times with Monica Price and then I did um, an all-night election special um, live show and uh, I really oh enjoyed word. it I know I was I was really put into the deep end with that mm. one and I just thought, you know what, sometimes you've got to come out your comfort zone and do these uh, things that people ask you to do. So I did an election special, an all night thing. Mm -hmm. And then I went over to Swindon and went on a local show in Swindon talking about my Life by Numbers book. But unfortunately, I never got to see that. I know it was broadcasted because people got in touch with me after, mm. but it was supposed to be uploaded to YouTube and it never was. All the other shows they did were on there apart from the one I did. So I never saw that one. But uh, oh. it's very hard to watch yourself back anyway. I'm the biggest <laughs> criticizer of myself. So when I watch back what I'd done on this morning, I, I literally watched it once back. And then, of course, my partner, Nigel, he kept showing it to people. We'd recorded it on our TV recording box and mm -hmm. I had to keep leaving the room. I just I just couldn't stand to watch it. You know, I was like, oh, my brummy accent. What do I look like? Why did I say that then? You know, I need to lose weight. <laughs> and you just literally, you know, sabotage yourself when you watch it. So mm -hmm. it's a very strange thing to do. And I'm trying not to be so critical of yeah. the way that I come over and I think that's something that we all do and other people probably don't even notice the things that we notice about ourselves absolutely that's the truth but tell me before we go on I want to ask you something Beth because there's so many things that you do you're a psychic a medium a clairvoyant um, an animal communicator but where did all that begin how did this journey into this psychic world, so to speak, begin? I've always been very in tune with animals 
for as far back as I can remember as a child. And I thought it was normal that you knew what your pet's thoughts were. And I would often say to my parents, like, oh, my cat needs this or my cat is upset about whatever. And they just, you know, they would just humor me. And then I used to ride horses at a local stables as a child. And I remember saying to my friend, oh, what is your horse telling you? You know, when you're riding your horse, is your horse telling you about their background? And my horse keeps saying he's got a bad back. And she just looked at me like I'd gone completely crazy. And the mm -hmm. penny dropped. I was probably around the age of 11, 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. And I thought other people aren't experiencing these pictures in their mind and these. Well, it's just like I have a conversation with an animal, you know, like they're talking to me telepathically and so I realized that uh, other people weren't experiencing these things in the same way and when I got older and I was able to purchase my first horse myself um, it all came back and we got the internet oh how I can't remember now when it was probably in about would it have been around 2002 something like that when everybody started um getting a computer and, and the internet was there and somebody was teaching me how to use you know a search tool and I mm -hmm. started thinking to myself do you know what I wonder if other people experience what I experience hearing animals talking so I searched it and then I realized that other people do it it had a title it's called animal communication and I got really back into it so what I decided to do because although I'm very aware of these things and I work as a psychic I'm still very skeptical you know I like to mm. test things out just because somebody tells me they can do something, I like to see it for real. And so what I decided to do was to test myself. So I put some little adverts out on various, um, oh, I can't think what they were called now, notice boards. Years ago, you used to get on the internet like a message board format on different websites. Mm -hmm. And you could sort of have a chat on there. And what I did, I put a message out, would anybody like a reading on their pet? And I got people from all over the world to send me pictures of their animals it's because I knew then in, in my heart that I didn't know the person, I didn't know the animal, I could not possibly know anything at all. So yeah. I tested myself, sent them, sent the emails back, each one kept coming back with, oh, my goodness, how do you know this? This is amazing. Absolutely correct. Because I've got a saddlery business. And what had happened with my saddlery business is that I closed it because I was selling horse riding equipment, but people stopped buying it. They just kept coming in with their photographs of their dogs and their horses and their cats because I would find myself selling, selling the saddlery, you see. And I'd mm -hmm. say, show me a picture of your horse because they'd say, oh, you know, I've got this problem with my horse. It, it It's bolting or it keeps bucking or rearing. And I'd go, right, well, I don't think that piece of equipment that you're looking at is going to solve your problem. Let me have a look at your, have you got a photograph? So they'd get the phone out, they'd show me a photo. And I'd say, oh, yeah, I'll tell you what's wrong with your horse. It's got a bad tooth at the back and you need to get the horse dentist or it's got a problem in the in the hoof or whatever it would be. Mm. And then they go off, get it checked. It would turn out that that was the case. And then they'd be like, oh, my goodness, you were right. No, I don't need that piece of equipment anymore. Um, so, you know, so they were more interested in coming with their pictures and mm. I, the saddlery dried up. So I thought, oh, well, I need to knock that on the head. People just want readings on their animals, you see. Now, I got into something called Reiki healing. Around, all This was all happening around about the same sort of time, probably around 2004, really, 2005. I got into Reiki. That seemed to really um, propel me even further forward. Reiki is a tremendous healing modality, a Japanese modality, where 
it's hands on healing. You're transmitting healing energy through your hands and passing that on to people, passing that on to animals as well. And I decided to train as a Reiki master because I was so blown away by a treatment I'd had that had really made a huge difference to me. I knew I had to pass that on to other people. So everything seemed to be happening um, psychically for me. And the Reiki seemed to open um, my third eye, if you like, up even further. So I was really uh, doing so many pet readings, trying to help people, whether it was missing animals, whether it was rescue animals, whether it was people who were riding their horses and having issues, whether it was things with their dogs, cats, rabbits, any animal can communicate if they choose to do so with you. So I really got into that. Then what started happening was during these sessions, sometimes I would be aware that somebody who'd passed away would be wanting to pass a message on to the person I was talking to. So it might be their mom, the dad, the sister, the brother, the grandfather, grandmother, whoever it may be. And I'd say, oh, do you mind if I just tell you this piece of information? And I would describe the person. I'd describe how they passed away, what had happened to them. Um, so it was validated. And then I would give the person the message. And I kind of really surprised myself um, over that and decided then it was time to separate into a personal reading for a person or doing an animal reading for them. And I quickly then discovered I had an affinity with oracle cards. And I rushed out. And, and the one day I went to Oxford. I live in the Midlands. We went to Oxford because Doreen Virtue and her husband at the time, Dr. Stephen Farmer, were doing a talk in WH Smith's. And mm -hmm. I went there and I was amazed. And I purchased the Doreen Virtue Magical Unicorn Cards. And that was it. I just started doing oracle card readings for people. People were coming because they were in a dilemma or they got a decision to make or they wanted to um, leave their partner. All sorts of things, you know, life mm. challenges. And I yeah. was, you know, doing my best to look at the outcomes, look at the future, make predictions. And so that is really how come I tend to do all different types of work under the psychic umbrella and then I became really poorly um I think it was in about 2015 I had I had chronic anemia mm -hmm. and I ended up in hospital because it was so bad that um they wanted to give me a blood transfusion anyway to cut a long story short um during my recovery I remembered that I st had started to write a book a couple of years previous. And these things, you know, you start them, but you're so busy, you don't get time to take it any further. And I thought, what can I do while I'm sort of resting and recovering from this illness? And I thought, yes, I started to write that numbers book. Let me get that out. So I just became um, really passionate about writing this book. And I believe I was channeling from the universe the meaning for every number between one and a thousand. So I'd write the number down, I'd tune in to my guides and to the universe, and then into my mind would be what that number means for somebody in a very personal way. And quickly I discovered it was a fast way of people getting their own psychic message through the numbers that they see in everyday life. And then as I progressed, um, the universe, I believe, spoke to me and said it was called 
universal number attraction. It's got a name. It's not numerology. It's something a little bit different to that. But each number carries an energy and a vibration. And you would be alerted to the number that you need at that particular time in your life. Therefore, the messages in the book sometimes are a little bit hard hitting. They certainly are not fluffy, angelic type messages. And it's not because I don't like that kind of thing. It's mm. just that the way it was channeled to me is in a very much direct in a direct way. And I think for me, the way that I work within my readings, I think I'm quite direct. I don't always fluff things out. I do get a lot of people that want me to uh, be quite specific with where they're at. I mean, I want to say this, a, a psychic isn't there to predict bad news. You know, I know when I'm saying I'm being specific and direct, I want to, you know, let everybody understand that it's it's about looking at the positive things that are coming along in your life and how you can be guided. And that really is the message of the book. Sometimes it gives you a bit of a push in the right direction. We can all fall prey to being um, a procrastinator, can't we? And think, oh, I should do this, or I would like to, but you never kind of get around to it. So sometimes the, the um, messages will push you out there and say, come on, get it done, because life will be so much better if you take that guidance. And everything around us, I mean, whether it be numbers or signs, everything is sending a message to us, isn't it? If we know how to unlock that power, every single thing that is around us, whether that be the birds, a particular bird turning up, a particular number, you know, in all sorts of traditions, you know, everything has a meaning. So I suppose it's helping people to reconnect to that basic natural, I suppose, energy, power, gift to be able to live their life, which is meaningful and according to their soul journey, would you say? I believe that we have so much potential that we don't tap into, that we mm. have forgotten how to use. And I think you're quite right. Mediums work and psychics work with symbology, just like you've said, it might be a uh, you know, an animal that you keep seeing. Normally you see things three times um, mm. when we're passing messages on from the spirit world to um, a person. You might see a symbol for something, you know, like, for instance, if I see a white flower, I know I've got to wish somebody a happy birthday. That mm. spirit are wishing them a happy birthday, you know, and I've got to do that on their behalf. So we work in symbology. And the biggest thing I would say for myself is that as I do the pet psychic work, it's that connection to the telepathic part of our brain. And so many people have got this ability, but they're just not using it. They're not processing it. So it's there. And it's ready to be reactivated with people that are open minded, that have a genuine love for animals. So I'm very passionate about teaching people how to do this. And I think the numbers book is the same. You know, it's something that's there. We all resonate with, but we're so busy in our lives. We don't always notice the signs that are around us all the time. I know that you are very much a person that looks at registration number plates. I know you've told me before yes. <laughs> that, that that's meaningful, like the numbers and the words or the letters on number plates. You know, you look out for those and you interpret them um, for yourself. And that's just one way of noticing what is around you within your environment. And I believe that the universe responds to our requests and will put those signs upon our path. Just the other night, we were driving home 
And it's not unusual, you know, if if you're driving for an hour at 12 o'clock at night, you know, at midnight, to perhaps see a little bit of wildlife. But we literally saw three foxes upon our journey. The first fox just ran across the road in front of us. Um, The second fox, about sort of 10 miles later, came into the middle of the road, saw us and ran back the same way it had just come from. And the third fox was literally, as we turned a corner, stood in the middle of the road, just staring at the car. So I had to put the brakes on um, quite sharply. As you can imagine, I was like, whoa, you know, I don't want to hit it. And I, I, I stopped it and it never moved. It just stood there looking at us. And um, and and I sort of like gestured with my hand. I went, go on, go on. And then it sort of just trotted very calmly over to the other side of the road. You know, like hmm. it was quite funny. And my partner, he went, do you know what, Beth? He said, three foxes in a row and the last one made us stop the car so that we took notice of it and he said I know what fox means he says because I've heard you say it time and time again he Mm. says aren't foxes about trickery and deception and I said yes Nige they are and I was quite impressed actually that he'd uh, you know that he'd taken notice of things that I talk about like animal spirit guides and and those Mm. kind of things and he said yeah he says I believe there's some trickery and deception he said around me I said you could well be right there well only a few days after that Mimi he had an email from somebody and Mm. the trickery and deception was exposed and he was really? like, I told you, he said, I told you that that fox was there showing me that there was something going on in the background. And it was true. So yeah. the more that we acknowledge the signs that are sent to us, the more signs will be sent. There's no point in the universe sending them if we're not taking any notice. But as soon as we take notice, the more the universe responds to our requests. I believe so much in the power of manifestation, about thinking positively. Um, And that has served me very well um, over the last few years. I've done so many transformational meditations um, to really sort of go in the direction that I want to go. So I believe the universe will provide you with the things that you require if that meets the pathway that you are on. So I've tried it so many times because you may have heard of The Secret. There's a film and a book that came yes, out quite yes, a few I've read years it and ago I've seen now. It. Yeah. And yeah. every everybody's, oh, ask for this and get what I want. It doesn't quite work like that. It has to match you up really with your soul path. But if you're aware of it, it really works. And I know that because it's worked for me so many times. And I ask for really wacky things. I don't ask for the normal things. And sometimes it was more that I wanted it proven um, and when it did work, then I'm like, yeah, this really works. I can I can be more positive and ask for even more that is going to work for me to to not just my benefit, for other people's benefit as well. Now, I want to ask you a question. It was something that was on my mind now. And if you don't mind, of course, to use your psychic skills, because I'd like the listeners out there also to experience something in the moment um, about you. And that is, do you know anything about the spirits and beings of nature in a garden? Do you have communication with things like that? Because I have a question for you, if you do. As in sort of elementals, like fairies, elves, that kind of thing, do you mean? Yes. Mm. Well, I'm open to anything. I do have beliefs about that. I believe that there are other things that that we don't necessarily see. I believe that plants are very spiritual as well and trees Mm. are very spiritual. So, yeah, I'm very open to all of this kind of stuff. Okay. 
So let me ask you something, a little bit of advice from you, if you don't Okay. Mind. So we have a garden and in this garden, I decided to put a fountain. It's not something huge. It's sort of, I don't know how, maybe two meters high. And I put the water in and I put the sort of solar thing that goes inside. And then I put some rocks and I put a few crystals in the water. And within an hour, the water's gone. So I did all the tests. I got rid of one of the um, bowls that the actual fountain was sitting in, the, the solar part, and put another bowl, checked it, there was no hole. The next day, I did the same. Within an hour or two, the water's gone. I thought, this is just impossible. So I took the stones out because I thought someone said, maybe it's the stones. Maybe it's the stones. Okay, fine. Let's take the stones out. Same thing the next day. Take out the fountain, someone said. Take that out because maybe actually it's that that's annoying someone, you know, in the invisible realm. Took that out. The water's still gone. Anyway, this goes on for about three weeks now. So I thought, I tell you what, I'm going to move the fountain from the middle of the garden, which is at the back of the house, to next to a log cabin. As soon as I moved it, the water doesn't, doesn't disappear. But I don't want it there. I want it in the middle. So I thought, well, let me put it to completely another part of the garden and see what happens then. So I moved the whole thing to another part of the garden. The water doesn't disappear. It's still there. So now I've put mirrored balls in it, into the water. I've moved it back into the original place. Um, this morning, the water was all there. But in a few hours, the water will be gone. Do you have an explanation for this, Beth? Who's drinking the water? <laughs> That's the point. And if I, I have a lot of, um, we have a lot of trees in the garden. So if I put any sort of plant there in that particular spot, which I really like that spot, in the morning, it will be knocked over. If I put it anywhere else, Nothing happens to it. So I don't want to upset anyone in the garden, but they quite like the mirrored balls, it seems. Um, I get a feeling they like the mirrored balls. So you can, they're like these balls, yes. I think you probably have seen them, you can see yourself in them. So that sort of made the atmosphere rather friendly. Um, I was all ready with the hose to fill the fountain up again this morning, but the water was there. The water hadn't gone missing. Um, but later in the afternoon, just before I spoke to you, I thought, let me go and check. It's become a bit of a thing now. Let me go and check. The water was still there. I thought, well, maybe they like the balls. I think you do have a lot of wildlife coming into your garden. So I do believe that animals and birds are drinking the water. And I think you're going to find that this just carries on and dependent on who comes in and I would also think that maybe then if you want to hear the sound of the fountain because obviously it may be that you've got it there for a therapeutic reason yes as absolutely. well as a visual reason mm -hmm. you know because there's nothing nicer than the bubbly sort of watery sounds and yes you know exactly. and I would think well the only thing you can do there Mimi is get another fountain so you've got the sound going on that will the water will stay replenished but I think you're doing like a disservice to any living creature in your garden if you take that away because it seems to me like an important water source now if you go down into a psychic um reading on a symbolism level that we've already mm. spoken about yeah then water i often put with a person to do with their work and the career because the water is not still you see the water is flowing but I would mm. also say that for your water to keep 
sort of drying up is that there may be one part of your work that dries up in order for another new opening to happen. So it makes me look at your work zone that you've got a new opportunity or a new invitation that's coming in. And because you will be keen more to do that than maybe something else that's going on, it is the right choice to close something off. So you're drying something up there. So I'm kind of seeing it in a in a two way thing, um, which which I, I tend to do. So I think I keep seeing I tell you what I keep seeing in my in my mind's eye mm, is the mm. magpie. I keep seeing magpie. So I think you like things very much black and white. You like to think yourself as a go-getter and you want to get the best things that you can. You don't like endings is what spirits show me. You like to push ahead. But sometimes it's necessary to close something in order to make space for the new that comes in. Um, I think that water flows is about the energy and the movement um, in, in your forward way, in your path. Um, I have this vision for you to be on water. I don't know whether you normally would like to go on a boat or whether you like swimming, but it's important for you to be in a recreational space where water will be because it will give you that tranquility and it will give you that answer to invading questions that you may have that are in some way um, demanding of your time or you can't come to a resolution of an answer. You know, you think, oh, I'll do it this way, shall I do it that way? I'm not sure what to do. But to be by water will bring the answers in for you because it will put you into that theta state of your brain where everything is calm so we can see things very clearly um, as i look at magpie magpies mm. are attracted to very shiny surfaces um, so that makes me feel that like you could well be attracted to maybe jewelry shiny beautiful things you know so you may be a bit of a collector you may turn those talents into maybe um, another career opportunity. Maybe that's, pro, you know, providing a service with um, a retail outlet where you would be selling that kind of merchandise um, is what spirits show me there. So you may have something rather lovely coming in that you can go and follow a bit of a different career path there. I would kind of just say to spirit, um, okay, I accept the water situation with the fountain. I accept that you're that you know that that sometimes it's necessary to provide that for an, for nature, not just for for me. And I can put something else in in addition to for my own for my own uh, sort of peacefulness within the garden. Um, I, I do believe in elementals and fairies, but in this situation, I just feel like it's more um, wildlife and birds that are coming in there and appreciating what's there um, that you've put there. And they're taking, um, you know, the benefits from that. For yourself, I would also be saying, am I dehydrated? Do I need extra water? Should I be having beautiful spring water from a natural source? And, and I'd be looking at those kind of things as well. Mm. Have you like recently upped your water level of drinking or have you been more I conscious? Have. I have actually. Water? I have a water thing. I have a water thing. I don't like being on boats at all. Um, it's not my thing, but I used to live and it would be ideal again to go back to living by the sea I used to live by the sea it's something that um I totally adore but yes I'm drinking more because it's a thing you know when you have to drink water and you have to drink it and all of that but I was just thinking as you were talking therefore because they can't be drinking that amount of water in an hour um because when I move it, the water doesn't move at all. So what do you suggest that I leave the fountain where it is and then have a, another separate water point for the animals yes. or whatever it is? Okay. 
I would have another fountain. Maybe you know just what? something I was different, that. you know, a, a different water feature. Um, because what I the, the weird thing with what you're saying to me, as I look, <laughs> if you like, remote viewing, because I, yeah, I do yeah. a little bit of that, I enjoy that kind of thing. And it's like I look at that and I, I can't see that the water is escaping through like a hole or a leak. I can't it to me it looks in my psychic vision, if you like, it mm, looks mm. completely sealed, like there's no faults. Mm, mm. So I can't see that there's like anything that where it is it is draining um away. But they just keep saying to me it it's happening because of the nature in your garden. You know, and and they just keep showing me birds, animals, and that is your is your garden quite landscaped and pretty? Because that's the way I'm seeing it in my mind. Yes, there's lots of flowers and lots of trees and lots of birds. Yeah, because they show me as as a well kept garden, very pretty, quite photogenic, um, and and I'm seeing like that as I'm as I'm kind of looking in. And and that's the way they give it to me. Um, I'm not seeing it in the fact of like um, elementals that mm. you know fairies are drinking it or anything like that. I don't I don't get it in that way at all. I get it in the way that, that is like a message for you, but also it's providing a service to nature within your garden. Yes, yes. Because I said to them, you know, I went out there and I said to them, look. If it's cheesing you off that I've put this in this position, then you're going to have to show me a sign. So what happened? I moved it literally three feet away and the water didn't disappear. It's only in that spot. Yes, but you've acknowledged it as well. So you've gone out there and you've said, look, I'm going to move it so I don't want the water draining because it's it's spoiling my enjoyment and and I, I brought mm. that to have the benefits of hearing the the you know the well seeing the beautiful fountain but also yeah. I keep getting about the sound that you really resonate with the I love the sound the it's beautiful isn't yeah. it when you hear the trickle it is, of it's water absolutely cool. I mean I love that not everybody does because some people say I've got a little um indoor fountain in my office and when I put that oh. on some people come in and they go oh no I've heard that I have to run to the loo <laughs> you know, so it's not oh, how wonderful not to have for it everyone in wow I've That's... only got a very small office and it, it's not a huge fountain but I really believe you know when you're doing psychic work it's mm. important to have the elements within yeah. your work zone so yeah. of course the element then it gives the element of water I've got plants in here for, for grounding and the earth and I light a candle for the fire. Um, mm. I've got like um, a diffuser thing with oils in, which I put for air. Mm -hmm. So I'm really conscious of like if you've got a work zone to set it up correctly so that you can do your best work because you've got everything balanced. Mm, mm, mm. I and think again, that's beautiful. And again, maybe that you're thinking, I need to go outside and I need to do some of my work outside. You know, I would also invite you to maybe get an indoor fountain wherever you're working so that you regain that balance within your own your own workspace, whether that's indoor or outdoor could be very good for you. That's a good idea. I'd have fountains everywhere. I've been fascinated by them since I was little. I just absolutely adore fountains. Just go out to your fountain, get some coins, throw a coin in and make a wish. Ask the universe to respond to you. All right, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to see if the money goes, then I'll be calling you again. <laughs> <laughs> Then we're if the money goes, we're going to be really different. freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's so wonderful, you know, Beth, because this sort of conversation is what keeps people really enjoy to actually feel that natural habitat to be in tune, as we say, with nature, with people. And I think when you start to understand a little bit about nature, it helps you to understand about people. 
Well, we need to get outdoors as much as possible. Mm. We went to the forest a couple of weeks ago. We took the dogs. It was nice and cool in the forest. And it just gave us that relaxation and de-stress level to it that we so needed. And there's nothing quite like it, you know, to be in amongst the woods or the trees, um, looking out for the nature, the birds. And just to be in that moment is really, really important. I went over to see my parents at the weekend. They've only got a small garden. Mm. And they do live in quite a built up area. Nevertheless, because they have so many plants and trees in their garden, just to sit there and hear all the beautiful bird song was amazing. And my brother in law, Derek, he said, can you hear that bird there? And he sort of imitated the noise. And I said, yeah, he said, that's a sparrow. Like he knew the bird. He knew the bird songs. And I thought, yeah, "Yeah, that's really observant that you've picked that out. And we just forget to do the most simplest of things. And the one day we were um, on holiday. Well, well, it was quite a long time ago now, only in the UK. And I'd gone into a charity shop in one of the towns. And I always look for Oracle cards because sometimes you find them in charity shops. Not very often, but occasionally you might find Mm. a pack. Anyway, I was sort of looking in the book department, as I normally would do. And I found this little pack of cards, which was identifying the birds in your garden. And I thought, oh, my niece will absolutely love these because she's so into animals and she's so into nature. She actually can do animal communication like myself. I've taught her how to do it. And she's very, very good. And so I said, oh, I've bought you a little present, Sophie. And she got these little bird, you know, these little bird cards. And I thought it's so important that we encourage younger children and young adults to you know relax with nature to understand what's around us because they're so taken up with their mobile phones and their iPads and their games and and all the rest of it that they're losing touch with that yes this is this is actually the key point is where the computer and technology has taken over everything. And it's such a delight to talk to you, Beth, because even discussing the fountain and what could that be and what could that be, it's actually being present in that moment in your surroundings and you're not escaping where you are. You're actually becoming part of where you are because wherever you are, we leave a part of ourselves. So that's what's so wonderful, you know, to talk to you is to have this other view that is, you know, a spiritual view of a situation, which is an amazing gift that you have. I think sometimes you have to look at what is going on in your life and and could there be another reason that these Mm. things are presenting themselves? So it will be interesting now that if you've understood the messages of the water and the fountain, it may be to do with your work and what we discussed, whether Mm. now that you've understood it, that that problem stops, you know, as if if it's if it's something that has been shown to you for another alternative reason, then Mm. often whatever is going on ceases. So I tend to look at things from all different points of view. Now, I do it a lot with my own animals because as a pet psychic, Um, I think that animals can mirror what's going on in our lives. And I believe that animals are more psychic than people. And they can often send us messages through telepathy, not just about themselves and who they are or their background Mm -hmm. or their needs and their wants, but they know so much about us and what is going on in our lives. And actually they can predict for the future. And so often I'll look at my, I've got, I've got two dogs, two rescue dogs, and I'll look at their behavior and then I'll think, are they showing me something through that behavior? So I do kind of go into things on a very um, deep level. So, for instance, like Misty, um, recently, she's been going in the garden and eating Mm -hmm. unsavory things in the garden. Okay. So I'm thinking... What's she doing that for? You know, she has really the best quality food. 
you know, and there's no need for her to be doing that. What is she showing me? And then it hit me. I was eating really rubbishy food. And I thought, yeah, she's telling me not to eat rubbish. Eat good food. Mm, okay. And I took that on board and I thought, yeah, I, I, I need to, you know, I think a lot of people in lockdown has let their diet slip because we've been bored at times. We've been locked in. We're not connecting with our normal uh, people that we'd normally be connected with. And sometimes food is comfort. And I think, yeah, it, I am a person that normally eats fairly well and fairly healthy but I kind of got into a couple of bad habits. I mm -hmm. never, I never eat, I never eat chocolate. I've never been interested in it from a child. It doesn't really do it for me, but I'd started eating a bit of chocolate. You know, those kind of things had started creeping in. And then mm. I, I looked at her eating what she shouldn't be eating in the garden. I thought, Hmm, she's saying, mom, look, we can all eat rubbish. It doesn't do us any good. And I stopped. I thought, oh, no, that's given me a message. So I thought, no, go and get some really good fruit and veg and, you know, salad ingredients. And, and really, we really started enjoying our really good, fresh meals. And guess what? She stopped doing it. Now, maybe it's a coincidence, but does it matter even if it was? Because it, it alerted me yes. to my bad yeah. behavior. And and so I tend to look at animals in a very different way that most people would look. And I think, right, how are they acting? What are they doing? Particularly with behavior issues. Mm. You know, we often will call in the dog behaviorist or somebody to try and assist. And sometimes that is the person that is needed in that situation. And But I will look at, like, is there a root of this problem? Why are they doing it? Where has it originated from? Particularly when it's a new behavior for an animal. So it's not something that they wouldn't be known for doing or they haven't done it before. You know, mm -hmm. so somebody said to me um, a while ago, they said, oh, I just want to know why my dog has started peeing on my slippers. You know, and I'm like, right, let's That's look a good at one. Why, 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 why is your baby? dog peeing on your yes. slippers? Hmm, because you need to get your outdoor shoes on a little bit more and go out, you know. And they said, oh, yeah, I've been staying in loads, been too scared to go out, always got my slippers on, you know. So we were kind of going down a different route. So that's mm. just a very quick example of it really so I tend to go underneath the surface with um, behavior and often I find that it can reflect upon what's going on in our lives now I became so um, really apparent with this because doing all my work I realized a few years ago that not everybody requires a psychic reading to help them some people I would say need counseling because mm. the traumas that they have been through within life or they may have recently gone through something and I decided to train up to level three as a counselor because I thought I want to do my best for the people that cross my path and sometimes I need to help them from you know, it's not just about having a reading and then where do we go from here? This is what you can put into place or I could refer them on to someone else or to um, an association or somebody that would be the right people to to help them in the best way forward. So I started doing um, counselling. I got really into it. I absolutely love it, actually. Just really to help me within within the readings. I wasn't set out to go and be a counsellor, mm. but I wanted to gain more knowledge and, and really know how to talk and listen to people correctly. And what happened during these courses, I think it was on the level three course, that you had to study um, like a place that was offering counselling. So you had to like go for like some um, work experience or go and have a session yourself so that you could um, write like a report on it, what you thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I'm sure I've heard of counselling with horses. And I thought, I Googled it and it's called equine assisted therapy because I'd seen a program years ago with Martin Clunes 
and he was crying. He was he was in America or somewhere, and he was with these horses having like this counselling session, and he was literally in tears. And then I'd also seen a programme with Arika Johnson, and, mm-hmm. and it was helping her with some kind of addiction. And I'd remembered that because of the animal side of it. So I Googled it, and I thought, they said, oh, there's not that many people who do equine-assisted therapy in the UK at the time. And I thought, oh, just typical, I'd want to go and look at that, and there's not many people doing it. Mm. And as I Googled it, I couldn't believe that somebody who actually offered that counselling service was five miles away from me. I thought, this is incredible. And when I Googled the address, it was at a field that I used to rent for my own horses my about goodness. three years previous. Mm. So I phoned up and I explained I was doing counselling at college and could I come and experience it to, to write up my, you know, my assignment about it and all the rest of it. And they welcomed me with open arms. And I couldn't believe it because I actually went to it was called Windsor Holloway where I used to keep my horses. So I Mm. went. It was like, oh, my God, I've come back home. And she taught me so much. And literally, um, she said, go over to this field of horses because the horse that you're meant to work with will be made apparent to you. And I thought, okay. Anyway, there was probably about eight or nine horses and ponies in this paddock and what happened as I went over two ponies started having like a fight and I was quite shocked and I thought oh my goodness but she just like if that had been my ponies having a bit of a squabble and kicking out and biting each other I would Mm. have told them off you know I'd have said whoa stop it but she just looked at them and she let them get on with it. So the first thing I was thinking, oh, she's just like, she's letting her ponies get on with it. You know, I was a little bit a bit taken back, but never said anything. And then I, she said, just go and stand by the fence and see if any of them approach you. Now, one of these ponies that was having this little fisticuffs with the other one started coming over. But this great big horse, he was probably about 17 hands. He was massive. He started coming over at the same time. Mm. And she said, do you, have you acknowledged what's going on there, Beth? And I said, well, yeah, it's like the pony's coming over. I'm the big horse. She went, well, didn't you acknowledge the fight that had just gone on in the background? I said, yeah, I was a bit, bit worried about that. She said, yeah, the ponies know that you've been in a battle with somebody and you're going through a really tough time and that you're going through a really big fight at the moment. And I said, yeah, that that is absolutely true. She didn't know that I was going through a, a quite horrible divorce. Mm. I hadn't said anything. And she said, yeah, the ponies are just reflecting on, you know, what what's going on in your life. And so that was the first thing. And I thought, hmm, mirroring what they know about me straight away. Yeah. The big yeah. horse came over. He was really beautiful. He was very gentle. And also the pony came over. Now, I'm only five foot one, so I'm not very big. So the biggest horse that I've ever owned was about 14 hands. So really wasn't. Well, I did own a race horse. She was probably about 15 to. Um, so not huge, but but I hadn't had her for long. I was just trying to help her get over um, a very bad injury. Mm. Um, nevertheless, I was really more used to handling smaller ponies up to about 14 hands high. So when this this huge 17 hand horse come over, I was thinking, oh, I hope she doesn't ask me to do anything with him because like I'm only short. I'm not used to great big horses. And she said, you've got a choice now, she said to make. She said, the ponies come over and the horse. Which one are you going to work with? She went, don't take the easy way out. That's what she said to me. <laughs> don't take the easy way out. And I thought, oh, yeah, she's saying go for the big horse. Not that she was trying to influence me, but it did make sense. Mm-hmm. So I, I opted for this this big beautiful horse, and actually he was a real gentleman. And she said, "You've got to get him out of the field and bring him into this other field." Now, bear in mind, I was familiar with this field because I used to rent it myself. Um, yes. But it was almost like it was all new to me. 
And it was all about you being autonomous, making your own choices, making your own decisions, and also looking out for your own safety. And so, of course, I'm used to handling horses, so I wasn't too worried about that. But what it was teaching me that when I got this big horse out and she we put him in the other field she said take the um you know the lead the lead rope the halter off and the rope and you've got to get this horse to walk with you without the need for any equipment and not only that then you've got to get him to jump over the jump without any equipment Mm, so mm. it really started to become apparent that this wasn't an easy thing to do and there was obstacles to overcome it was about trying to work out how to do it obviously I was using my animal communication skills but I didn't tell her that <laughs> so, yeah. so that was a bit of a bonus but it really showed me the healing abilities and what the animals can perceive that's going on in your lives. Like I had got so many obstacles to get over. I was finding it tricky. I was in a bad place at the time. I was trying to better myself by getting into the counseling so that I could help more people. But mm. really, it was about healing myself from my, from my problems before I could really help other people. So this really cemented for me how much healing animals can bring into our lives. Now, yesterday, and I don't know if you saw this on the news, Mimi, I started to cry when I saw this. There was a picture of this beautiful dog, like um, I think he was like a cockapoo. Mm -hmm. And it just flashed up on the news. And, and if you Google this, you, I'm sure you'll find it, that there was a lady on a bridge about to um, commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And the dog, this dog, a therapy dog, had been sent in. And this dog oh. saved her. It was incredible. Oh. Making me feel emotional just telling you about it. Oh, and I looked, at, I looked at this dog's face. They put a beautiful photograph on the screen. I looked into this dog's eyes and I thought, you are an angel in disguise. Your purpose in life is to is to help and to heal. And they sent the dog in and they told the lady if she come off the bridge, she could stroke the dog. And it saved her from jumping off the bridge. So oh. that perfectly illustrates how important animals truly are in our lives how they are here here to assist to help to aid to make such a huge difference and now more than ever animals are starting to be recognized for these abilities you know and, and you know when you see sometimes the um army dogs and the police dogs and they get yes. like a medal and things like that oh mm -hmm. god i could just cheer when i see all this so i think that it's happening more and more that we're becoming more spiritually aware of the healing um abilities that animals have i know you're a cat lady and i know you must identify with that in some way <laughs> Oh, yes, I absolutely adore cats. I adore horses. Um, absolutely. I love miniature ponies. That's my love. And little, do you mean like little Falabellas or miniature Falabellas, yes, Falabellas, Falabellas. Aren't they just the best, those little they Falabellas? They're, like, <laughs> they're literally like miniature horses, aren't they? They are. That's what they are. And I absolutely adore them. They are like cats and miniature ponies are my favorite um ever so I totally understand when you were telling me about the cockapoo and the lady and or, this is why you're so intriguing because it's my love animals are really my love and it's something that I always believe with children that if children can have a pet very early on it really does help them in so many different ways well, it teaches them about being responsible, that mm. there is care needed, not just for yourself, but for another mm. living thing. But not only that, the companionship, the understanding, the, the playful side of it. Animals love to play. 
you know, mm. and often um, animals will play not only with their own species, but they may play with a, you know, a cat may play with a dog. The dog may play with the rabbit, you know, and you see that there's so many like Facebook um, videos and things where all these mm. things are going on. And I love watching those. I can waste hours. You know, you, you watch one and then another one loads itself up. So I think it, you're right. Animals are very connected to children and vice versa. But you see, children are telepathically often communicating with their pets, just like I was as a mm. child. So it is it is um, important never to dismiss anything that your child says about their pets because we often just put it down to imagination yes you know yeah. you know and they, they might say things oh mommy billy says he's hungry and he wants his dinner and he might want to go for a walk and they go oh yes yes well don't worry because billy was fed an hour ago so he can't possibly be hungry and you know like we like <laughs> we like pat it over but to really observe what children are saying about their pets i mm. i'm always fascinated by that and when I link in doing pet psychic readings if there are any children um, in the home I always like to get the animals take on why are you together what has brought you together because animals are never with us by accident mm. you know I always think it's predestined that we share our lives with the particular animals that that come along for us because sometimes they're they're not it's not all about just going out and purchasing a pet sometimes they find their way to us whether it's because they're astray whether it's because a friend says oh I've got somebody who's got to get rid of the dog any chance you could have it whatever those circumstances are you know that animal is with you for a reason and it's it's interesting to know what those reasons are now, yes. a few years ago, I also was very conscious of like, could this extend to like anything on a medical level between people and animals? Because I kind of like to explore all so sorts of options. Mm -hmm. And as I was thinking about this the one day, I was watching, you know, the program on BBC called The One Show. I've heard of it. Yes. Yeah, well, it was it was quite a long time ago. It certainly wasn't recent, probably about probably more than 10, maybe 10 years ago or something. Anyway, that's irrelevant. And they were having this thing where they were asking people to send in pictures of like, you know, when your pet looks like you, you know, and you yes. get like you get like a poodle with, with like like white curly hair then you get a lady with her white curly hair and you think oh yeah they 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 look the same you know and um it, it is true you do get so many like pets and their owners that blend together they look but like they a look couple. the same they look like they're meant to be together and and yeah. they were laughing about these pictures and I thought oh I don't I, I just know that this is how it happens this is the way things go sometimes and yeah. then they said but the funny thing is this person who sent this in says it goes a step beyond that he's got asthma and his dog has got asthma and I thought yeah. this is interesting you know sometimes can animals even mirror like health things that are going on around us so I was very open-minded about that and I'm not saying that that is the case all of the time but I'm certainly have seen um, similarities between um, the owners and the pets health issues and one day I went to um, somebody phoned me and asked if I'd go and have a look at their dog and I said yeah I'd go and have a look and see what I picked up and she said to me on the phone she said, oh, she said, uh, there's something wrong with the dog. And, and I said, don't tell me what it is. I said, because let me come, let me do my psychic, uh, pet psychic stuff. And I don't want to know anything in advance. You know, it's not mm -hmm. me knowing about it. It's me explaining to you what I pick up. I don't want to be um, given any information prior to, to this. I said, so don't tell me. Oh, well, she said, uh, my dog has got a health complaint. I said, well, don't tell me what it is you know and anyway so she said well the only thing I will say she said that I hope you don't mind when you come round that my husband will be lying on the settee in the living room she says because he's slipped a disc in his back and I instantly said it without thinking I went oh I went now that's not a problem at all I said but you've just told me what's wrong with your dog 
And she went, <gasps> she went, yeah. She said, my dog's got a problem with his neck and he's, he's a disc in his neck. And she oh, just wow. like, literally, she just was like mm. astonished that I'd said that. And, and I kind of hadn't filtered it. It just came straight out of my mouth. And, mm. and I remembered that. And I thought, oh, how interesting. You know, what does this mean? Does it mean that animals are, are in sympathy with us? Does it mean that we have an influence on them? And I kind of tie myself up in knots, me, me over it sometimes. So sometimes I just accept that that's how it is because I haven't yes. got all the answers. You know, I'm not somebody that, that knows everything, but I'm always learning all the time. And I do become very observant on how animals link with us so it's just something for people really that you know that are listening in to think about and have their own thoughts and opinions on that but hopefully it just makes you extend your mind a little bit further into new possibilities and concepts Absolutely. And a couple of weeks ago, I'll share this story with you, Beth. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a garden centre and it's a garden centre. It's not really, I mean, it's been around for years, but it's a family business and it's in the middle of nowhere. And um, it sort of feels like you've gone into some sort of magical land. And they have a dog which wanders around, but they also have this cat and it's a black cat. And it looks a bit sort of rough around the edges. And I said to it, oh, how lovely is this, your cat? And the owner's daughter said, no, it's not. I said, but I've been here a few times in the past few weeks and it's always here. And she said, well, no, I'm not accepting it. I said, well, whose cat is it? So then the one of their workers said, it arrived here. I said, oh, what happened? So apparently the cat arrived literally I think it was about 18 months ago and it's a black cat and it just started laying on there um outside where people pay they pay outside there isn't an inside to it and it started to lay there so they took it to the vet to see if it had been chipped and it had been chipped so they found out the owner's details and they rang the owner and the owner said oh we lost that cat three years ago. We thought it was dead. So they said, well, we've got your cat. And the owner said, we don't want it. So I felt so sorry for the cat. And the cat was very nice with me. It was very, very nice. I did touch it, I have to say. Um, I couldn't help it. And it wasn't, and, you know, it wasn't aggressive at all. And then they said to me, so they, they decided to keep it. Um, but they weren't keen on it. So the worker um, guy said to me, don't touch it. It's very aggressive. I said, it hasn't been aggressive at all. They said, oh, he is. He's very aggressive. And I remember looking at the owner's daughter and she's quite aggressive. And then I thought it reminded me of what you're just saying now, the story, because I thought, I wonder, you know, um, it's aggressive with her. It's not aggressive with anyone else but it's aggressive with her. And that's just turned up. And then I said, do you love your cat? She said, no. So I sort of looked at her and said, yes, you do. And she said, yes, I do. Okay, I do. I do love it. And the cat looked at me and looked at her. And I thought, well, lady, I think you have a lesson here to learn, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but it's true. Animals are really good mirrors, as well as humans, of course, but of something within us that needs to be healed I think. Amazing that was that you'd also picked up on it and you'd kind <laughs> of you kind of confronted her about it you know you knew that she loves that cat yeah. even though her first reaction was no I don't you knew your your intuition had certainly kicked in. Yes because I thought she's a nice lady but I could tell that um you know, intuition and all that. I could tell that she was a little bit um, starved of love. And, you know, once I got her, she was walking around with me and I was, she's very, very knowledgeable. And I said, well, what do you think about this plant? And what do you think about this? And do you think it's the right plant? And she was really sort of let herself go, was talking and everything. But with other people, she was very correct, military style. But I knew she loved that cat. Um, 
because I could see this gentleness. And I said, but you do love it. And the cat was there. No, I don't. And I thought, yes, you do. And I said, yes, you do. And I was nodding my head, you know, you do love it. And I was saying, Shh. and there were customers there and they were laughing. She said, yes, I do love it. Okay. And the cat sort of looked. <laughs> Amazing. The thing that comes into my mind when you're telling us mm. that story is that lady has some kind of like fear of rejection. So it's like she puts the walls up. Yes. Yeah. I got exactly And, and I the really same. felt that she felt yeah. safe with you, like you'd accepted her and hadn't rejected her. And yeah. that she thought it was okay to let you in. And, and she'd been led by the cat because her cat showed her that I like Mimi, I'm going to let Mimi fuss me. Yes. And so she was led by that cat. Well, that's, yes. well, my cat normally is aggressive to everybody, but mm. my cat's let you in, so you must be okay, and I'm going to let you in as well, and I'm not going to, you know, fear that I'm going to be rejected by you because my you, you haven't rejected my cat. My cat hasn't rejected you. So she mm. is very much working within the energy of her cat, and picking up on all the signals she may not be aware that she's doing it it may be very like from a subconscious level nevertheless there's more going on and that cat knew that yes. had to find her so that they yes. could be um together and and cats amaze me and <laughs> often what i find is that cats have got second or third homes they they haven't always got just their one home they mm. often visit people that need them. And I recently um, uh, did a reading. Well, I, I didn't do it directly. I passed the reading on through somebody else. I did like um, like somebody told me about something and I said, tell this lady this information. So I passed a message back. Mm. And this lady was really upset because her cat had gone missing, which I get this all of the time. This, the cat cats often do wonder they go and visit other people and and you know they, they are independent um lots of the time she was distressed and i said tell her not to worry the cat will be back and the reason the cat has gone is because he's gone to this house where there is a lady who really needs him at the moment because she's really upset and i feel that there's been a bereavement there and the cat knows that she is in a state of grief and the cat has gone to comfort her. So anyway, this was passed on um, to the owner of the cat. And then a few weeks later, the message came back that, oh, my cat's come back. Uh, and I've actually met the lady. Um, and because the cat literally had only gone a bit further down the road, and, and I met the lady and I said to her, please stop feeding my cat because I love this cat. And I know now that this cat keeps coming to your house. And she said, oh, I'm really sorry. She says, but she said, your cat has like helped me so much because my husband has passed away. And I've been so lonely and so distressed that when it happened, your cat has been visiting me ever since. So that's why I've been feeding him. Aww. And then what she said was was quite incredible. The owner of the cat, she said, oh, my goodness. She said, the reason I got this cat is because my husband passed away and I felt that it was important to have a pet so that I wasn't on my own. So this cat was very much tuned in that when people are grieving, mm. the cat knows he has a job to do to comfort and to bring hope. Um, and purpose to people who are in a state of grief and what's lovely is these two people have met now and they're both in similar circumstances Aww. they're both both widows and they've met through the cat and they only live a few doors away from each other so isn't that amazing how what, that a, cat... what a beautiful story yeah, this is only fairly recent. Um, so I, I see these kind of lovely synchronicities mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. take place. I mean, look at all the dogs that have introduced um, the potential husband and wives to each other. Yes. Because yeah, they've been yeah. on a dog walk and the dogs want to play. And my daughter phoned me, actually. 
Mm-hmm. Um, only on Sunday and I said oh how's your day been because she lives in London I live in in Malvern and she she's got a little rescue dog called Vivian now she calls her Vivian Westwolf because she's mad on Vivian Westwood you see mm-hmm. the fashion mm-hmm. designer so, yeah. so we have a little bit of a joke so we, we call Vivian Westwood Viv <laughs> for short that's so a very very brand little- name <laughs> <laughs> So she takes little Viv for a walk and um, she went, she went to, I don't know if she said she went to Clapham or I don't know where she went, somewhere in London where there's a park anyway. And she said, oh, she said, um, she said, I met this lovely girl. She said she got a little dog. I can't remember what the breed was now. And her dog's called Billy. And Vivian went straight up to Billy and Vivian and Billy just started playing instantly, running around together. And this girl said to Rex, she said, I can't believe it. She says, Billy doesn't like other dogs. And Billy has never played with another dog. I've never witnessed this before. And this girl was almost in tears. And Rachel said, oh, no, she says, well, Vivian can be a bit funny with new dogs. She doesn't normally go up to a new dog and instantly start to play. And they started talking, the dogs were playing, and it turned out that this girl is fairly new to the UK. Uh, She's got married and she's living in London. She doesn't know anybody. Um, She's got like a a new job. She's moved to a new area. And and I said, you know what? Those two dogs are trying to get get you and her to be friends because she has it she doesn't know anybody and Rachel said mom she said it was like I'd known her all my life we just hit it off we got so much in common we like doing the same things she said and she said to me would you like to come around to my house we can sit in the garden let the dogs play and drink some wine and Rachel was like yeah let me know when you're free and I'll be round so you know how dogs can introduce yeah to new people and and that girl obviously I mean Rachel has lived in London for many years she knows so many people she's got lots of friends but I know what will happen Rachel will be friends with her and she will introduce her I bet to her people and she'll become one of them I think and I thought yeah how funny that you know this little Billy who doesn't like dogs never plays with another dog all of a sudden started playing with Viv so you know it's very interesting to watch these things happen and I'm sure that that will really uh, resonate with some people who are listening in today that that similar thing has happened to them and I think what a what a delightful story really and it actually keeps us very, very present in the moment to grasp every moment and to see that there's an opportunity for friendship, for love, you know, in every circumstance, not to become hopeless and to, you know, become, which is so easy, you know, in the world to become down in the dumps and, you know, to feel lonely, but to really have the courage to reach out to people to do something new and you never know really who you're going to meet and how they're going to change your life. It's so true and even if you haven't got the facilities to have a dog you can certainly still talk to people who are walking their dogs you know because people love you to ask they love it. You know, I love it when people come and go, oh, look at your little dogs. They're so cute. What's their names? You know, I'm always happy to chat to people. But mm. not only that, there is an amazing website called Borrow My Doggy. So if you can't have your own dog, you can go on there and everything is really uh, vetted really well. That you Borrow can actually, My Doggy? What's yeah, that? you can borrow somebody else's dog. Um to no. take out if, if you're if you're missing that companionship of a dog and maybe you're oh not in circumstances goodness. allowing you to have your own dog mm. you can go on you can go on borrow my doggy and have a look at that wow. and then the other thing that i've noticed fairly recently loads of cat cafes have started opening up what are they actually i've seen those but what is a cat cafe well, cats are in the cafe. 
Doing Literally, what? Have you, you can have a coffee and you can <laughs> sit there and all the cats are wandering around. Oh, and who do they belong to? People who are mad on cats. <laughs> what? So you me and you would bring me. Our... Yes, I have to. So you and I could have a cat and we could and then we take the cat to the cafe or what? No, you just you I think the cats are already cats that live there. What an interesting idea. Yeah, I'm going to have to I never that saw up. one. I, I don't know whether I was in, it might have been Stroud. I can't remember. I might not have got that quite right. I know I went somewhere and uh, I was looking through the window and the cats were there. People were having a lovely time. And I have to be a little bit careful because I'm very sensitive to do this work. I often get very sneezy um, around cats, which is so annoying because I absolutely adore cats, but I can't have one um, in the house because I just end up sneezing all the time. So I probably wouldn't be able to go to the cat cafe, unfortunately, as much as I would love to do that. But I just love how these things are starting to um, really become apparent now. So for anybody that is listening and thinking, oh, well, I can't have an animal because of my work situation Mm. or whatever it may be, there are other ways to spend um, time with animals. And we were going to London um, a couple of weeks ago. And en route, we saw uh, a big, you know, when you see a retail park of shops, Mm. and sometimes they have these big pet shops on there. So we pulled over um, because I was trying to get these certain dog treats that I haven't been able to find. And we went in and on the back wall, there was loads of dog beds. Mm. And as I looked at the dog beds, I looked behind the one dog bed and there was a cat curled up like at the dog on a dog bed right at the back of the shelf. And I just went, oh, hello, what are you doing there? And I assumed that this cat was like the cat that belonged to the pet shop. Anyway, I said to my daughter, I said, oh, look, there's a cat on there in the dog bed. Have a look at that. And we were laughing about it, you know, all this cat all cosy and nice. And it was about sort of about 25 past five and they shut at half five. And I said, oh, we couldn't find what we were looking for. They hadn't got it. So then the, these these people who worked were trying to shoo the cat out. And I said, oh, I thought that was like the cat who lived here. And they said, no, this cat comes in every day. <laughs> we, have to, we have to shoo this cat out at the end of the day. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to somebody around the corner. And mm. I just thought that was so funny that this cat had found like a nice pet shop to go and spend its days in, like <laughs> lolling around all over the dog beds. You know, and I thought, yeah, I wonder if your if your people know you're here, you know, and, and cats yes. do seem to seek out different places to go. But totally was not um, worried at all about us in the shop you know, knew it had to leave at the end of the day. It was it was very amusing. I, I, I found it really lovely. And I thought, yes, yeah, sometimes it's just nice. We have a big pet shop um, near to where we live. Sometimes I go in there because they have a lot of little hamsters in there. They have this lovely big rabbit pen because I can't have those kind of animals because I've got little dogs. It wouldn't be a mm. good idea. And uh, sometimes I just want to be in the presence of like those animals and I go in and have a little telepathic chat with them. Um, And so there are places you can go if you're missing that sort of connection and love for an animal, if you're not able like to have your own. So I just think that things are really moving forward. I see a lot now about therapy dogs going into schools, going Mm. into hospitals, you know, there's these amazing dogs that know when they're when when people are going into an epileptic fit yes. and they're alert, you know, they alert people. And and it, it's it's not just now about, you know, animals for people that are partially sighted or have have no vision. It's just moved further and further forward. And um, that pleases me greatly. How wonderful. Absolutely. I'm so delighted, really, Beth, to have you here today. And 
you know, there's so many things I could ask you. I'm going to write a list next time. And um, I'm going to definitely tell you about the fountain, what's happened. I'm going to order another fountain as well. So, you know, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today, really. It's been an absolute delight and pleasure. Well, you must drink from the fountain of life, Mimi. (laughs) (laughs) Embrace everything that you've got that's good in your life. How wonderful. My goodness. What a good piece of advice, actually. I'm going to ponder on that later. Now, Beth, for people out there who would love to contact you, where can they find you? I have a website, which is Mm psychicbeth.com. I'm on Instagram, Elizabeth Lee Crowther underscore psychic. So you can find me on there. And Facebook, I've got a Psychic Beth page on Facebook. I've also got um, Life by Numbers book page on Facebook and Live Your Best Life um, Oracle deck uh, page as well, because I did release uh, my own Oracle cards a couple of years ago too. So I'm quite easy to find or just Google me, just put Beth Lee Crowther into Google and I'll I'll pop up and you'll be able to uh, connect with me. Uh, somehow if you just have a look there but I've really loved being on your podcast Mimi thank you so much for inviting me on I've really enjoyed it it's an absolute pleasure Beth and people that want to buy your um, book and your is it a deck of cards yeah it's a 52 card deck they're they're it's all about really looking at the future guiding you favorably Mm. you have to get those cards directly from me I haven't got them on Amazon yet so just contact me then they're um 19.99 a pack and my book is available on Amazon if you just put in life by numbers Elizabeth Barber It'll come up because I did them in my maiden name, you see, my cards and my book. Ah, okay. um, so if you just if yeah, so if you just put that in, it'll mm-hmm. um it'll come up on Amazon. It's ten pounds. But if you want to buy it direct from me, I do a special offer where you can have the book and the cards for twenty five pounds for both. I knock a fiver off. We all like a bargain, don't we? Oh yes, we do. we do indeed. We do indeed. Now we before do. we go <laughs> <laughs> indeed a bargain pig. Uh, my friend calls it a bargain pig. So I I think I'm a bargain pig for sure. (laughs) Um, But but tell me something inspirational for me and the listeners out there. I always ask my guests this at the end of the show, something in a paragraph really, Beth, that can keep that hope alive in people out there. You're never on your own. Even if you think you are, there is always somebody that you can reach out to, you know, and always think to yourself that you have something to offer others as well. Never get into that that space where you think that you're not good enough because you are good enough. I think a lot of the times we are held back from false beliefs about ourselves And I've learned that over time, you know, and it is important to remember that you are good enough and that you can do good for other people. So always reach out to someone else and always remember that animals are there to help heal and support you as well. And I just think that you can um, achieve anything that you set your mind to I know that I've challenged myself and I've achieved achieved so much that I dared to dream you know I dared to think that one day I could write a book and I did it and I thought I'll be on tv one day and I did that and then I thought oh I'd love to have my own radio show that happened now if I can do those things then so can so many other people achieve their goals. It's just about having a little bit of courage at the end of the day and a little bit of self-belief and some support as well. Um, and that's all you need. Just just go on, Google things like um, the law of attraction, the secret, because opening your mind to these new concepts is so easy and natural to do. The one piece of advice that I would say to people currently 
we've all been through such a hard time it is important to look after yourself to keep hydrated but also meditation is the most fantastic tool that you can utilize and there are so many free guided meditations on the internet and on podcasts that you can utilize and they can really help you uh, become clearer in your thoughts they can help you de-stress we're all under so much amount of stress and it can help you make the spiritual connection that you may so be looking for so you know i hope that that has given a little bit of bit of insight and advice if anybody is thinking about stretching themselves a little bit further forward and the one thing I will say, Mimi, is mm -hmm. since I've really let people know about what I do with my psychic work, there are so many wonderful people that you will meet in the industry of um, spiritual awareness, holistics, and you know therapists and things like that we're, we're, there's some good people out there that will be only too happy to involve you as well so never feel that you're alone come and join my radio show we'll, we'll make a fuss of you and we'll look after you over there oh wonderful yes it's on a wednesday night between what time 6 and 8 p.m. UK time on Pulse Talk Radio. And anybody who wants to have a free reading on there is extremely welcome. There you go for everybody out there for something different and to find the real path in your life. Let us, um, you know, lead you to Beth and to her show and see what life brings. You never know what's around the corner. You certainly don't. Life is full of opportunities. It's just being brave enough to have that little bit of, of courage to go out and, uh, you know, put yourselves into situations where you can connect with other people. Facebook has got some lovely groups on there. You know, I've met loads of people through Facebook, uh, Mimi, you know, just by going on some lovely spiritual groups. Now, my friend, Minty May, who's a lovely guy, he's got a beautiful group on Facebook. It's called the Soul Collective. So mm -hmm. that might be something where people can go and join in um, and get to know people on there. There's some lovely people um, that is part of that group. It's like a little family. So, you know, do have a look at that. Um, but, there, are, you know, the, there is some wonderful groups on Facebook. And I've met some lovely people actually on Instagram as well. I'm trying to get a little bit more, you know, um what's what's the word a little bit more knowledgeable about social media <laughs> yes <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to come out of uh, the old-fashioned ways of of doing things and embrace you know what what's available to us because i know it sometimes gets um a bit of a bit of negative uh, people can talk about things in a negative way. It's just about going to the right places on social media to find your clan, to find your mm -hmm. tribe, if you like, to find the people that you really have a connection with. Very good advice, actually, because there's always somebody out there who is your tribe, so to speak. Wonderful advice. Thank you again, Beth. Please come again anytime and share that wonderful knowledge with us and wisdom that's so, so fascinating. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Elizabeth Lee Crowther. What an absolutely interesting subject about the beauty and wonderment of animals amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you lots of love and lots of luck. Until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to Secrets for an Inspirational Life, brought to you by your host, Mimi Novik. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and see you in the next episode. For more information about Mimi Novik and her books, music and inspirational work, take a look at her website www.miminovic.co.uk